Welcome everybody to a new edition of Tulsa Little Jam, and this I'm excited about this episode because we have Grasshopper with us tonight, the two Cody's on either side. I'm flanked by Cody's right now. And we're very excited because this this is like a, some really great sort of roots feeling music. So I feel like we're getting getting more into the the, the roots of Oklahoma with this kind of music, and I'm very psyched about that. Because there's so many cool modern uh, renditions of this sound, and that's one of the things about the Tulsa music scene that excites me now. Yeah. And so I'm really psyched that when I heard these guys play at another uh, venue, I was just like, instantly, I went up to them at the back of the house after they were done. And I'm pretty sure they were a little confused and creeped out by me, <laughs> but it was dark, so I think that's part of the reason, right? Hey, <laughs> so, hey, <yeah. laughs> he's like, he's still... It was uh, super dark. Slightly afraid <laughs> of me. So with that, guys, let's welcome Grasshopper. <laughs> Always on the one break the way long from where cast had lied all alone beside you. applause for Grasshopper. I uh, I love the sound um, and it's it's cool because it's like a, a completely different dynamic than what's we've had on the show so far. There's no percussion. There's no. It's it's such a nice soothing sound. 
I just, oh. I really dig it. And it's funny, I, I haven't always been into that sort of genre, but how did you guys decide to, to put this together? Uh, man, honestly, it started with a uh, duo. My friend Dylan Angleton and I um, started out about eight years ago, um, kind of just for fun. And I started playing banjo, and get, I was a guitar player, and then so we just kind of like started playing a little music, and then like we started this little band like on some folk music that we liked, like Wilco and this and that. And uh, he left for California to just do his organic thing, and, uh, and <laughs> we all know what that means, right? He's a farmer in Humboldt County. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, like, he does grow vegetables for his family. And now he, you know, has got a whole life out there. And then uh, so I was like, well, hell, I got to <laughs> figure this thing out, you know. So I got to keep going because I like playing music. So I found Cody Clinton here. And we've kind of elevated it, you know, to a bluegrass kind of jam, um, jam grass or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, just kind of keeping it going. And that's where it started. So. So what what is the uh, t tell me about the the first song you just played? Uh, All alone beside you. Um, I wrote that about you know being alone beside somebody that you. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's hard as shit. <laughs> I love you, Katie. By the way, <laughs> she knows I love her. I'm just. Wait. Um, you know, just uh, it's about being alone, you know, with like when you're with somebody, then all of a sudden you're just kind of like feeling that 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 loneliness while you're there at at the same time. You know what I mean? You guys get it? Yes. All right. Yeah. No, I can't really say it, but you you get it. This episode of Oil Fires Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you by. Oh, I've been having a dead man. 
Thank you. That one's called Monster there, folks. This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you by... I, I'm curious why Cody, uh, Cody number two, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't say much. Well, he's part of the band. <laughs> he's the guitar player that I hired. <laughs> I got kicked by a mule when I was four. Us. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I used to have straight hair. But. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, but After the mule, it's done for. It was so weird. It's the weirdest thing that ever happened. Oh, my God. He's got his other band oh. he can, like... Actually, that's from growing up in Ulaga. He has to say things for. <laughs> Underneath the power lines. And the, uh, the PSO, you know. So let's... I want to talk about... I want to... I, this, well, this show is, like, falling apart right now. I love it. Is it? Um, so, oh, that's great. Sorry. There is a lot of that. that what's, what's interesting is because you, Cody, are with Desi and Cody, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we were fans of Grasshopper. That's kind of how this all, we came together. Because, like, we played shows together, and I think we were fans of each other. Yeah. And then Dylan left, and I kind of swept in like a vulture or something. <laughs> well, I, I'm curious how it's going to work, how the dynamic works, because... A lot of the bands here, and I, I don't, obviously you don't, the bigger the city, you don't see this, but the talent is immense, and yet the pool of talent isn't as immense as you would think. So you see people who play in multiple bands, and the bands, all of them are amazing. Yeah. So what happens if you, do you guys like have the talk? Do you sit down and say, look, I know you're in such and such, such and such, such and such, such and such. What if such and such takes off? What do you do? What happens? You go, yay. <laughs> you just support. And I mean, my old band, The Bishops, uh, we had Brandon Holder and Bo Sharon playing <clears throat> in our band, and then they got hired by Leon Russell, and I was extremely happy for them. Yeah. And so you just keep going, you know? And it didn't hurt me any. You know, if anything, it's, I got to meet Leon Russell, you know? So <laughs> what, what's good for one is good for all, you know? So. Amen. Right? Yeah. I agree. It's 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 a hard time. Like I mean, like even still today, it's like Jordan Hill, you know, and comes and goes, and like uh, great bass player. He's in every other band in town, mm -hmm. and, but like you want him to keep in this band, right? So it's like you got to just make sure the bills are paid. Yeah. Hey, I'll pay you more than the rest. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how it works, but not really. But <laughs> no, like uh, you know, we're, not yeah, about the I, music. No, I think it is about the music. I think it's like uh, the culmination of like people that want to do things in town, like are they're pushing for like uh, they want to be where the great music is. They also want to be, you know, like um, they have to pay their bills, and they also like I don't know. I think it's a it's a friendship. They have to like you know it has to work well, you know, it has to fit well. So I think it's a, it's a lot of things, but I feel like if you can. Keep keep it going, you know. Like um, keep the music pumping. Like keep the gigs going. Like the, the, those people will find their way, and it all kinds of find it finds a way, you know, finds a way. Life finds a way. It does. This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you by. Uh, this next one is called Party People. You guys, are party people. You like to party? Okay, it's good. <laughs> So you wanna settle down on, then you better settle down on. I'm not the man you wanna be with, honey. So take a pass, cause I don't need all the bit of money. It's when the sun hits set a road, all the traveling is told. All the want to the sun with all never be time for. We all Little different these days. Tell about lies, seem more to have to wear around eyes. We all, we all, little different these days. Tell about lies, seem more to have to wear around eyes.
Tom's in a long fade road. I said the whole damn time I knew it right, all I let you go. All oh, my some eight towns in a long fade road. I said the whole damn time I knew it right, all I let you go. When they sun is set around all the traveling is told All the one to the sun on the middle of the town We all we all did a different these days The tear by the lies seem on the head to your way around our We all This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you by... Do you guys ever think to yourselves, because I, I mean, I imagine this is a problem. The, the, the conversation that I've had a lot with people is that there isn't enough industry here for music. That is music. true, yeah. So is that something that you all are wishing would change to help... Uh... At this point, is there an industry anyways? I mean, what's left of the music industry is in Nashville, and there's not much there. I don't know. That was the most depressing <laughs> response. Well, the industry was always gross, you know. Oh, well, don't get the entertainment industry appears is disgusting, you I know. I think Hunter S. Thompson called it a long plastic hallway filled with thieves and pimps. And then he said, and then there's a good side. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to bring it down. Here. I thought this was going to be such a light Sorry, Hunter S. Thompson, I might have got that quote wrong. <laughs> Don't ask me questions. What what really what can we do? What can we do? What what would He's help? The happy one. <laughs> what would help the bands be able to have you know to be able to not have to always support each other, but not have to depend on needing to be in five different bands to make things work? How do we fix that in Oklahoma? Hmm. Tour. Stop staying in town. Start touring. However that, however you can make that happen. Like with Desi and I, we play with a full band in town because we can. And then when we go on the road, it's just me and her because we can afford it. And we have a great time. And same with him. Him and I are going to do a tour here pretty soon with just the two of us. And it won't be the same, you know. It'll be what you guys just saw, but it won't be the same, like, level of excitement or whatever as if we had the drummer and bass player. But... But if all you're ever doing is playing in town, I mean, I love playing in Tulsa. Tulsa is a great music city, and I love our community, but... There's like a thing Desi and I have, like we talk about called Tulsa famous and people kind of mm -hmm. get Tulsa famous and they think they're, you know, famous. <laughs> and then I, if you think that, I encourage you to go on tour because you'll find out really fast that you're not. <laughs> Who you guys called again? No, no parking. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the thing, right? Yeah. It's a, it, in order for you to be appreciated that much more in your own town, Get out of your town. You've got a tour, yeah. yeah. And start spreading your music to other places. It's not saying go to New York, go to Chicago. Go, go to Chicago, don't go to New York. Uh, oh, hey, I take offense to the New York because I'm I just live saying in New York. Because Chicago, so. you can make it there in a day. I do love New York. And then you can make it back. You can go St. Louis, Chicago, Minneapolis, and you've only spent a week. Oh, you're just talking about and yeah. just in, logistically. Logistically, great. Yeah. yes, of course, you can get to Chicago the same day. Yes, I agree. And go to, you know... New York, Denver, by the way, is only a 20-hour drive straight through. Go to New Orleans, go to Nashville. Go to places you can go and be back in three days. Right. Because if you stay out on the road for three weeks, you'll end up like Desi and I, and you'll have a bit, a bit, a bit of credit card debt. <laughs> but your sound is getting... <laughs> and you'll hate each other. <laughs> and you hate each other. No, I, I think, yeah, uh, Tulsa's got a great thing. I, I, I hope that it can, can you know, keep going. I, I do believe that, like... The bands need to also be a part of the marketing scheme, you know, for the the the, the bar. You know, it's like we all we're all on it together. Like we all need to be like on the promotion side, um, pushing it. You know, this is this is all of a team, not like oh yeah, you do the rest of it and like, I'll give you whatever. It needs to be a team. You know, like like this thing. It's like 
we're pushing a certain idea, you know? Yeah. I think yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great, by the way. Thank you for this. Oh, you kidding? No, thank you guys. I mean, I can't. This sort of Give thing. Give him a round of applause. I think he did. Yeah, uh, this guy. Yeah. This is, uh, well, first of all, like a team, I can't do it without my partners, uh, uh, Carlos and Meg, so, you know, and, and Lyndon, our, our cinematographer. So we, I believe in team, but yeah, I, I, I think this is important because you can't, you, like you said, you got to get out of that Tulsa famous zone and you got to put yourself out there. You're not going to be getting anywhere a, as an artist, you know, and I think right. plus life experiences outside of here just add to your art as well. Totally. So, exactly. and then that makes you, when you're gone for a month, you come back to Tulsa, oh my gosh, I haven't seen them play in a month. Yeah. I gotta go see them. Right. The demand increases. Right, if you're playing the same place every week like we do. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to keep people coming to the shows because, well, it does and I did that for a long time. It gets to a point where you kind of have to pull the reins in because if you can see, uh, see a band play for free on every Wednesday night, then why would you go pay 10 bucks to see them on a Friday night whenever you can just go right. for free, so. That's part of it, too. Uh, and that's one of the traps of, of being in a music town. It happens in Nashville, too, and other places. The happiest man in show business, everybody. <laughs> Round of applause for the happiest man we're, in show business. For real, all right? <laughs> <laughs> this is real music life. This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you by... This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you by... Any audience questions real quick, guys? Any audience questions? We got yeah. a question in the back there. Um, you guys were talking about changes, changes in the industry earlier, or, or perhaps death of an industry. Um, do you have any advice for younger artists trying to navigate a world where there's an increasing responsibility on the artist to take care of all the odds and ends of the business? 
be it marketing, finances, you know. He's, he's the marketing dude. He's really good at the marketing stuff. So if you have questions about that, you might be. Uh, man, you know, it's like I just keep learning. Like I keep focusing on bands that I, I do love, you know, like uh, Wilco and this and that. And I, I just try to like find out what they're doing. Um, Tulsa wise, I, yeah, I'm trying to keep it fresh and keep it new. Um, I, I, I do struggle with like, you know, playing a weekly gig and like trying to keep it fr fresh and new as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's always like just kind of keep keeping at it, you know, um, trying to see what other bands are doing, honestly, like what, your, what, what are your favorite bands doing? And it's like trying to push for that, you know? And yeah, tour, I mean, you know, you say I'm the saddest guy, negative guy, but I've had a blast on the road. Absolute. We were in uh, Duluth, Minnesota, which is almost Canada, like a month or two ago. <laughs> and it is, it was great. Like I've never been to a place that cold where I had that good of a time. <laughs> but it was a great, it was really cool. Like they, they have a really great scene. And there's other great scenes other than Tulsa and, and other than Nashville and other than Los Angeles. And the idea is to find as many of those where you can fit in and, and get there. And the other thing is licensing and sync licensing. That's That's been good for Desi and I in terms of if you can find somebody who can help you get your song in a TV show or a, you know, in the old days it was kind of like a faux pas or whatever, but now it's, you know, there's a reason you hear the who and Led Zeppelin and car commercials, because that, that is where all the money is now. So if you can do that, do it, you know. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't really think you're the saddest man in the show business. Okay. No, I'm just the saddest guy in this room. <laughs> Any other wah, wah. audience questions? I don't even know if I qualify for show business stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Well, so I just thought I would ask you the requisite question about influences. I mean, your music seems very obviously rooted in bluegrass, but I'm sure you guys listen to a lot of other stuff, too, and I wonder if s some of the other stuff comes into Yeah, like it. I said, I've been, like, heavily influenced by Wilco lately. Like, God, that's been my, my jam lately. Um, that and, like, yes, bluegrass is, like, Always, always there. Um, fl Any flat and Scruggs, and, um, but I, you know, Bob Dylan is kind of like that. And obviously, you know, I used to work here at the, you know, Woody Guthrie Center, so the Woody Guthrie influence is always there. Uh, but yeah, I'm always listening to, the, you know, the Police, to pff, reggae, to everything, and I'm always trying to take like a little bit of everything. I'm always like, you know, what can I do to influence that? I like the the jam grass scene, like fish and this and that. Like they kind of bring all genres together, you know, in a lot of ways. Grateful Dead. It's like you can do rock and roll, you can do bluegrass, you can do all this stuff together, you know. And it's like I just don't want to like be pigeonholed into this scene, like, oh, you got to do all bluegrass, you know. And, and we're just never that way. And we were on a road not too long ago. People were like, is this blues grass? And I'm like, yeah. Whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Uh, you know, put me in a genre. Seems like we were listening to a lot of David Bowie on that tour. A lot of David Bowie, you know. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of all over the place, you know. I'm trying to put all that, that stuff into with a banjo and a guitar. Or, you know, bass and drums and all that stuff. So I'm, uh, I don't know, it's all over the place. But yeah, David Bowie and all that, those influences definitely play a part in my songwriting. Yeah. So what's next for Grasshopper? Uh, we're actually going uh, to Little Rock and Fort Smith here soon, and uh, other than that, we're just kind of writing songs, and um, it's kind of a little more on that, I keep calling Wilco out, um, but yes, it's in that vein, it's like song, you know, singer-songwriter meets uh, some psychedelic instruments, so that's kind of where we're going. All right. Well, once again, thank you very much to uh, so Grasshopper, everybody, Grasshopper. Thank you very much, guys. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. We appreciate it. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I said, look, won't say.